and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for joining me today on my latest episode on my latest Liverpool transfer news and daily news on Liverpool Football Club. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button so you can all keep up to date. Thank you everyone for the new subscribers. It really is appreciated and welcome. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me and thank you everyone for watching and joining us for all the latest Liverpool news. If you're a Liverpool fan, hit that subscribe button so we can all keep up to date and we can all interact mainly. That's the best part about this channel. I, I created this just so all of Liverpool fans and we can all communicate and talk about what what we love is Liverpool Football Club. So welcome everyone. Hope you're having a boss day. If it's in the sunshine, wherever you are in the world, have a, having a quality, quality day. Yeah, I've got three talking points today. Obviously, if you haven't seen my Kaita news, I've done two videos, I've done the stats figures, the stats surrounding the excellent midfield that more or less looking like in principle a deal is being agreed. He's take talk to Jürgen Klopp. So check those two videos out if you haven't seen them. They're on my channel. Check them out. They, they, I really can't wait for this that to happen. It's been looking more and more very much likely with Jürgen and the boys coming back to Melwood. So yeah, check that out. I'll be talking about Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Daniel Sturridge and Jürgen Klopp's done a very good interview. I'll talk about that first about his expectations and what he wants from pre-season. So, as always, I'll do half of the stories and then you can just check the rest of them in the description. I always leave the stories, so it doesn't end after the show. You can just all go and check those stories out. But yeah, let's get cracking onto it. But oh yeah, quick one. As for all the, if you're a new subscriber, I'm going to be doing a 1,000 subscriber special. I'll be going, I'll be, because I'm a local, Anfield's only down the road. And wherever you are in the world, you don't get the opportunity to actually see and come to the ground. So I'm going to be doing like a, a little tour, because it's only down the road. I'll be doing a little tour and tour diary and to show every single one of you. And I really do appreciate every single subscriber. So that's my little treat to use. And I'll enjoy it as well, but I'll be sharing it with all those amazing subscribers and everyone that is on board with with all of us here. We're one big massive family. But yeah, right. Jürgen Klopp is looking to become more tactical flexible, tactically flexible. Red's boss aims to use summer friendlies to try out new formations. Jürgen Klopp says they will be he will use the preseason schedule to become more tactically flexible ahead of the 2017-18 season. The Reds will obviously they're meeting up next week. And we've got the Tranmere game. That's a, that's going to kick off the very first pre-season. Let me know if you'll be watching that with everyone in the world. So, yeah, asked ahead of pre-season aims what he expects to see from the upcoming pre-season. Klopp said, quoted as saying, Tactically wise, getting more flexible, flexible, depending who is there and when, and introducing different systems. In brackets, in 2015-16, we played most of the time kind of... 4-2-3-1. In 2016-17 season, most of the time was either a 4-3-3 formation or 4-5-1. In our opinion, it fitted the best players we had at our disposal. I'm not sure which way we have to play next year. There will be a few different ones. We'll be well prepared for European football. Also, we need a bigger squad, of course. Obviously, with the introduction of European football and all competitions... We had the best tactical manager years ago, didn't we, in Rafa Benitez. It set his team up and you knew what you'd get from Rafa. From a technical aspect, he'd be able to bring on a player and he's changed the game within seconds. Depending if you need to defend or you were going for that extra goal in Europe. Being tactical and inept is very important in Europe because there's different styles. The Spanish, Germans and the Italians and all the other leagues around the world, basically, they all have different styles of playing. Obviously, the English teams... We have our own style of playing. That's what makes European football the best to actually watch because you come up against a variety of different teams. So that is very much what Klopp is bang on there. So that's what he's going to be driving in this coming season. I'm not sure which way we have to play next year. There will be a different ones and we'll prepare for European football and we'll need a bigger squad, of course. We'll be good. I'm looking forward to it. There will be opportunities for this club's youngsters, he's quoted as saying. And he goes in to talk about, usually you always want to take the next step for one year to the next year. Klopp's old, obviously, LFC TV. You'll have to see how things fit. And when the new players are in, that is very much very true. So as soon as the players come in, especially the new guys, obviously, Solanke when he signs, and obviously, Mohamed Salah, it's very much 
and it's you have to get integrated into teams that's it's like joining any job or basically new any other new job you need to get used to your mates and your colleagues as well so he's talking about the young players are one year older that that doesn't make the big the biggest difference but being one year longer involved in the first team they can make big steps because they're a little bit settled in a good way they feel as excited they don't feel as excited anymore about each day in training, thinking, oh my god, that's Adam Lana Adam Lallana next to me and thinks things like that. This can be a big difference. Obviously when if you're a new kid in the if you join Barcelona or Liverpool and you're like, oh Gerards, you'd get you get butterflies in that wouldn't you? So but as Klopp is saying there, soon as they've done they've done one year, it might not seem a lot, but they they they'll be used to the environment in which the, the young lads will be in, involved in the training sessions. You'll have to probably make one or two steps back and then make five or six steps in the right direction, he's close to saying. They're the same objectives. So yeah, I'm very much looking at... Let me know what you're thinking about what Jürgen's had to say then about the tactical flexibility. He'll be trying out new formations, which is his main thing, coming into the pre-season. And for me, that is very much a key aspect for this coming season because let me know last season... For you, there was sometimes when, for me personally, when you sat there and you're like, come on, you can do something, change something. And it seemed to be the same thing over and over again. Especially against Park the Bus teams, we didn't quite literally nail down. We need to learn to break those teams down. I think that's what he's going to use this period in time, pre-season, to like bring in the players that he wants. And he can see that and implement it into a variety of systems. So yeah, it's a 4-5-1, as you mentioned last season, 4-3-3. Or 4 2 3 1. I think personally, Rafa used to use a 4 2 3 1 in Europe, didn't he? With Gerard and Torres, and then Javi Alonso and Masha uh, in, in central midfield, sitting, and then you had your two like right mids or left mids, but they'd be more or less sitting deep if you were like away from home and they'd use a break on down the flanks. But let me know what you feel about that and you're excited about tr what formations would you like Jürgen to actually maybe try out with all the players that we've actually got? As he said, players coming in or going out would have a big big impact and in relation to last season the formations were in relation to what players he had at his disposable income like but yeah let me know let me know leave down the comment section but right next story ox the ox the ox the ox apparently coming out today in the echo Arsenal may be forced to sell Liverpool transfer target Alex Oxlade Chamberlain after he rejected apparently the offer of a new contract. Obviously, Chamberlain scored 20 goals in 194 appearances for the Gunners. Obviously, he joined back in 2011 from the Saints. Southampton again. <laughs> if it's the, if it, everyone will be like, oh, another Southampton player. Nearly. But he moved to Arsenal. But with, with anyone that is playing for Southampton, just come to Liverpool. <laughs> you will eventually, even if you go to Arsenal City, you eventually come, come to us. But yeah, the international is... He's talked about maybe, if he is moving, it's mainly down to the point of him getting into the England team. Obviously, where is it? The Emirates, the next destination is vital in relation to his England career, hopefully. So he's looking for a move. Arsenal stumped Liverpool with the initial approach of Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, as they're still hoping he'd pen a new deal. But obviously the news has come out that he's meant to have rejected. However, the stumbling block, as they say in the echo, but... For me, they've talked about maybe the stumbling block maybe being the price tag and being in relation £25 million. Alex, it goes into more detail, so check that out in the Echo, but I'll leave it in, in the description. He's willing to actually run down his contract, and that's where Arsenal are like, oh, would we have rather let him see go on a free or if there is a club available and if Liverpool would pay £25 million? That's what I did want to hear from you really would you pay would you be happy to pay 25 million for the ox that is the big question for me 25 million is very much a good deal even though he's going into his final year and we could get him for not in next season but for the squad and obviously everyone had had first dibs it'd be free agents it'd be going wherever but if Liverpool signaled out their interest if you had an Oxlade Chamberlain on the bench or even in the team that is very much an improvement on last season. At the back end of last season, we all had kids on the bench, didn't we? The squad depth is key, as we've all mentioned, every single one of us. 
the and Klopp t- talks about is tactical flexibility. And Ox is very much a player that suits into that flexible adaptations into midfield. He can play in midfield, out wide, and even in the central attacking areas. But yeah, let me know on the Ox what your opinions are on the England international. For me personally, I really do rate him. And under under the guidance of Jurgen Klopp, he can even get even better as a player. And right, the final story is obviously here, I'm seeing it, is Daniel, Daniel Sturridge. Apparently, Jurgen Klopp is putting the blocks He's putting the block blocking Daniel Sturridge from leaving. Apparently, it's in relation to he be basically too expensive to replace. He's he's spoken, has spoken to his senior Jürgen. Apparently, spoken to his senior members of his scouting team, and believes that the inflated transfer market is proven a barrier into Sturridge moving. The German reckons that any money received for Daniel Sturridge would be dwarfed by the amount it would cost to bring in another striker or of similar quality, leaving a player in limbo. The prospects of another player playing a bit part role. So yeah, let me know. It's a big story with Danny. If if we can keep him fit, wow. If instead of obviously Bobby playing, we we all know Daniel Sturridge's quality when he is on the pitch. He is arguably our best striker, and even for me, if you if a fit Daniel Sturridge is our best player on on his game, he's world class. He's up there with even I reckon in the Premier League is very much a fit Daniel Sturridge is arguably one of the best. I'd put him in the top five strikers just for his finishing ability and his sheer quality. Even that strike against Seville in Europe in Europa League final, that come from nothing basically, didn't he? He's got that magic about him. As Suarez and players of that ilk, I'm not putting bloody hell, I'm not putting Sturridge and Suarez in the same bracket, but with special players, they have a, a tendency to make something out of nothing. And I think personally, we'd be better off keeping Daniel. Let me know what would you think about, what, what do you want to do with Daniel Sturridge at Liverpool Football Club? Would you sell him? But it'd be very hard to actually replace him, as Klopp said, with a player of his quality when he is fit. It's the it's the limbo for Liverpool Football Club, not as just Daniel Sturridge. Obviously, Danny wants to be playing a first-team regular position, but there's nothing stopping him if he stays fit. That is the big, it's the big grinding thing as Liverpool Football Club and us as all fans. Nothing more than we want is to see Daniel Sturridge leading our line for Liverpool Football Club when he is fit. We see him when he was with Suarez last season, when he was fit. The the demolition that he done to the striking, it those three up front and mainly Sturridge, he's unplayable when he is fit. So let me know what would you with Dan would you, you do with Daniel Sturridge? That is very much. And if we were to sell him, what bracket would you expect for you individually? You'd expect to maybe get in in return. But obviously Klopp talks about there it being too expensive and he's more, he's only right really because. If you were going to bring in a player, you're looking at maybe 50, 60 million. Even though Danny's crocked at the minute. Well, he's. it depends what day, day, day of the week you get him on. If he's injured at the one week or not. But yeah, you have to go from week to week with Danny. But yeah, let me know. Thank you very much. As always, everyone. Hope you're having a boss day. And if you liked the video, hit that subscribe button. Put your notifications on. I noticed a couple of people saying, uh, when you've been releasing videos. But just put your notifications on. YouTube does that. Well, just to make sure your notifications tab's coming up. But thank you, everyone. If you liked it, like that subscribe button and hit that like button. It'd be very much appreciated. All the best, everyone. Hope you're having a quality day. And I'll speak to you very soon. Ciao.